I've come across a nice lot in an auction house near me. Ian, the Master of Pieces part-time eBay reseller. Let's see if we can win it and then sell it on eBay for profit. Now I've just watched one of Ricky Lee's most recent videos and he's got me inspired. Now Ricky's been going to a few auction houses recently and sourcing stock that way for his business. I've never really considered that. I've always gone charity shops, boot sales, and I've usually found enough to keep me busy. But it's got me thinking, am I missing something here? Are there just some amazing deals out there that I'm just not even entertaining? Well, I found an auction house here in Cardiff. They've got an online setup as well. I'm gonna have a look to see if there's any decent listings. So I've had a good sort through and the auctions run on either a Saturday or Sunday. This is the Sunday auction and I've come across this list in here, lot number 26. Let's make it a bit bigger. So you can instantly see it's a big gaming bundle. Lots of consoles, lots of games. The description says box Sega Mega Drive, Wii U console, three PS2s, a N64 console, GoPro, controllers and games. Lots going on there, isn't there? Let's open it up. So instantly we can see there is the Mega Drive boxed. It is one of the first Mega Drives, but look at that huge rip down the side there. That looks like a Mega Drive 2 controller perhaps. It looks like a little Switch controller there. A couple of Dreamcast controllers, tons of games, but none of those titles really jump out at me as being particularly valuable. That looks like the Wii U console unit. Don't know what that is in there. But that looks like the other part of the Wii U, the pad. That's a Marshall little foot pedal there. Is that the GoPro? Don't know, can't really see from the picture. There's the N64 with a, with a gray controller. It did say PS2s, didn't it? But those are definitely PS1s. So it's an interesting lot, isn't it? Could be a lot of profit here if we can get it for the right price. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and put a value on this roughly. And this is exactly the same process that I do for any Facebook marketplace or Gumtree pickup. I go about this exact same process. Let me take you through it. So to price up a bundle like this, I'm only going to consider the big hitting items. That is where the bulk of the money is. I'm not going to consider any of these games, the controllers, the Marshall foot pedal, that is going to be used as a bit of float. That's a bit of risk money. If any of these consoles don't work or are incomplete, we can lean on the money that this may bring in to cover those costs. So the way that I'm going to evaluate these, eBay sold listings. Box Mega Drive first, let's have a look. Box Mega Drive console up the top there. Remember we are Christmas time, so this, these are be selling for a lot more than what they might do for the rest of the year. That's that Mega Drive 2 there. Box Mega Drive there, lovely condition. 90 quid for that one. Worse off condition on bids, 40 quid. Console only, 40 quid plus postage. And there's one there, good condition, 87 quid. As a valuation for the Box Mega Drive 1, we don't know if it's complete, big tear on the box. I'm gonna go for about 50 quid. What that does then is that's 50 quid that is coming back to me in my bank. That takes into account eBay fees um, and also postage on top of that. So that's 50 quid back to me. Wii U console next. There's one there, 80 quid plus postage, 100 quid there. 65 quid, spares and repairs, 35 quid. A big range of prices there. When I'm pricing a bundle like this, I don't usually price at the higher end, I aim for the lower end. It means you're not gonna get burnt. So the valuation, the Wii U, we're gonna go for about 65 quid. Again, we could probably sell it for more than that, but after you include eBay fees and the postage, we're gonna be bringing in about 65. N64 console next. And there's two right at the top there, 65 quid and 80 quid, plus postage on top. Evaluation, we're gonna go straight on the lower price there, 65 quid. We know that there's potential for it to sell for 80 quid. So yeah, 65 quid is a safe estimate. And finally, the three PS1 consoles. Now I've had a couple of these and I find that they are hard to shift at the higher amount. This one's gone for about 28 quid. 
um, but that's all in so you'll have to take a bit of postage on top of that I do have a lot of filler games there's some filler games there that's gone for 65 quid there's one there 25 quid plus postage so valuation for PlayStation 1 considering I've got a lot of filler games here that I can supplement we're going to go for about 25 quid each three PS1s let's go 75 pounds so adding up all of those totals, we're coming to about 255 quid. Let's call it 250 quid. We don't know about the GoPro, couldn't see that in the picture. The Marshall pedal's worth about 15 plus postage. Controllers and the games, all stuff that is gonna bring us more money in above that 250 quid. So to break even on the consoles, assuming that they sell for the lower end of what sold listings are telling me, I need to be bidding at less than 250 pounds. There's still a bit of risk in that mind. We don't know if the consoles work. We don't know if they got the leads. We don't know if they got official controllers. We don't know any of that. And with this auction house, they're charging about 20% above your final bid. That's what you've got to pay. So if I was to bid, to bid 250 quid, I'd actually be paying 300 quid. So I need to factor that in as well. So my gut feel for this auction, considering I do want to make a bit of money on this and considering all the risks involved, it's about 150 quid. Auctioneering fees on top of that, I'll be paying 180 quid total. Potential payback off the consoles could be about 250 quid, so that's 70 pounds profit, plus any additional profit I'll make off of the games, the controllers and the foot pedal. Now, some of you may be thinking I'm bidding a little bit too high here. 180 quid bid? for a potential 250 pound return on some consoles that might not work, plus some games that we don't know about. Well, the thing is my bid has to be competitive. I've got to imagine that there'll be other bidders here wanting to do the same thing. My thinking is if I put a bid of say 100 pounds in and it ended up selling for the 150 quid, I'd be gutted. But if this ends up selling for 200 quid, well, I could accept that. When balancing up profit, risk and expenditure, £200 would feel a bit too much based on what the consoles would bring back alone. Yeah, And in an ideal world, what I'd love to do is go down the auction house Sunday morning before the auction starts, have a look through the whole lot, see what some of the games are, see if it's complete, see what the controllers are, and just firm up some of those assumptions. But unfortunately, I'm not in Cardiff this weekend. So all I can go off is that picture that they've given me. £180 feels like the right sweet spot for me. If it all comes back working, then brilliant. I could make some decent profit. If none of the consoles work, remember you can still sell stuff on for parts and there's enough volume there that I'm not really gonna lose too much money or I'm gonna lose an amount that I'm comfortable with. You can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm massively overthinking this. I do this all the time with any marketplace or Gumtree pickup. I always overthink stuff, but I'm gonna stick that bid in. There we go, max bid 150 quid. I've done an absentee bid because I won't actually be able to watch this come in. So the auctioneer knows that that is my highest bid. So bids have been placed. Let's check out some eBay solds and then we'll come back and see if we were successful. I've had seven sales on eBay Wednesday and Thursday. Let me take you through them all. First sale. I'm glad this is gone. It's been stuck in the corner of my garage down there. It's never really found a home. It's just really awkward. What we've got is an old My Little Pony show stable. You can see the original sticker there. Lots of little fiddly bits, lots of accessories, so I put them all in this bag. Now the story behind this is I saw this at the car boot sale and the reason I picked it up is because it had lots of the original first generation My Little Ponies. Those I've either sold individually or bundled up. That's what made the majority of the profit. And then I had this left over. Not complete. It's, it's in reasonable condition. A few of the catches have, have split. Some of the stickers have peel, peeled off. But it's original. It's old. There's collectors that love this type of stuff. It's not sold for much. It's gone for 15 quid plus postage. My reluctance to it. It's big. There's lots of voids inside. It's not the most structurally sound. It's going to take a lot of void filling. It's going to take a, a lot of packing to make sure this gets to the buyer in one piece but I'm up for the challenge. Next sale, two Pikachu plushes. There they are there, nothing special, not particularly valuable. I had these listed up for 11 pounds plus postage and these have been listed for over a year. The reason I know that right is because this time last year I had an offer for nine pounds plus postage. On the run up to Christmas, I thought, mm, I wanted 11 plus postage, let's meet halfway, 10 pounds. 
they rejected the offer. It's taken 12 months for another offer to come in. Eight pounds plus postage, I'm snapping your hand off for that. I don't want these sat around for another 12 months. Three shoe sales to show you now. This pair of hocker shoes I found last Saturday on the run up to Halloween. They got everything going for them. Great brand, reasonable condition. They are UK size 11 and a half, so good size. They are missing the insoles in there, but either way, still very sellable. I paid £6.50 for these. These are sold for 45 quid all in. If you see Hocker, pick it up. These are a nice pair of New Balance Marathon running shoes. The reason I say marathon running shoes, right, is because they've got these interesting rose gold tongues to them. And it says on there, 2008 New York Marathon. These have been hanging around for a while. And actually, come the new year, it's going to be the whole new year, new me, fitness regimes. Maybe people are buying stuff for Christmas to try and preempt that. I don't know. But these are sold for full price, 30 quid all in. And the third pair of shoes, we've got a pair of Merrill walking boots. Gore-Tex on the side there. Great quality, good brand. They got everything going for them. Turn them over. Look at the wear there. Now, I picked these up at a boot sale, and I was well aware of that, and I only paid a pound for these. They haven't sold for mega amounts of money because of that, but they've still gone for £10 plus postage. So even though the quality is not there, the brand and the Gore-Tex have carried these through. Remember when I picked up this football shirt over in Newport? From 1994, we've got a World Cup Nigeria shirt. Big issue with this is it should have a number 10 on the front and it's it's peeled off. Should have a number 10 on the back. Obviously missing the zero. It's got a kocha on the top there. Size large. I paid £4 for this. The patterning just did it for me. It is awesome, isn't it? That has sold for 20 quid all in. Yes, these defects have hampered the price, but it's a nice bit of profit, isn't it? And the final sale, a pretty conventional sale, but I have not sold a Furby for ages. I only listed this up a couple of days ago. It's been in my kind of death pile because it needed the battery acid cleaning, cleaned it all out, got it working, made a, I did take a photo because the contacts are pretty dirty, but I also showed in the photo that the eyes light up and it is fully tested and working. That one there has sold for nine pounds plus postage. And another one that snuck in just before I'm gonna do my parcel drop. Here it is, tucked in here. It's a Canon camera bag, a DSLR camera bag. I picked this up for a pound in Newport. It doesn't have anything else in it, but it's got all the straps, all the zips work. That's gone for 20 quid, all in. So all bids are in. The result has been announced and I didn't get it. On the hammer, it was 180 quid. So after fees, someone has bought that for 216 pounds. So remember we valued the consoles at about 250 quid. If it's all working, 216, you're only leaving yourself with 36 pounds profit. Albeit it doesn't account for any of the games, any of those extras as well. It shows that I was in the mix though. I wasn't too far off, maybe a little bit cheap, but then I priced in a bit more risk. So there's a couple of scenarios here, which I imagine is going through the actual winner's head. Firstly, they might be happier with just that lower amount of profit. For me, it feels like there's not enough profit per pound spent. They might just be a little less risk adverse. They might be more than content to just get their money back on the consoles, have a gamble with the games and the controllers and make their profit that way. The other option is I might have been up against a collector. Someone might have wanted the box Mega Drive for their collection, so are happy to pay market price and maybe recoup the money for it using the other stuff. I think what would definitely have helped me here though is if I had gone down and had a good look at the table and had an inspection of all of those games. Maybe I've missed some of it here. But looking at what it's sold for, I wasn't too far off. So all in all, I'm not disappointed that I missed this and I will be looking at other similar auctions again in the future. So let me take you through what's sold on eBay for the rest of the weekend. First up, I want to show you this pair of cows. Check these out. I bought these when I was on my summer holidays. I found them just chilling in a local charity shop. I bought them actually so the kids could play with them on the beach. They're by a company called Bruder. Can't really see that on there. German company, keep an eye out for it though. These cows have sold for 15 quid all in and they're, they're in pretty good condition. A little bit of paint loss on the horns and the hooves, stuff like that. But even so, nice price considering what they are. 
Next up, we've got a pair of Dr. Martin's steel toe cap boots. No laces, reasonable condition, plenty of tread on there, but someone has either kicked something really hard or dropped something really heavy. Because there's a lot of scuffing on there, a lot of scuffing on there. I paid a pound at the boot sale for these. Absolute bargain, they've gone for 30 quid, all in. Can you hear that rain? Well, on the theme of shoes, I sold this pair of suede Vans high tops, size UK four and a half. They've got that kind of brownie colour sole there. Those have gone for 20 quid, all in. Vans, constant, good seller if you can get them at the right price. Set of Scalectrix track now. This is the micro Scalectrix stuff. And I do see a fair bit of micro Scalectrix around, but I tend to just skip on it. This stuff is really temperamental. Even if you can buy a complete set to get it all rigged up and working, I think it's quite rare secondhand. I thought I'd give Bundling the track a go. It hasn't done as well as the other Scalectrix type of track that I've sold before. That there has gone for nine quid all in. This is a random one. I found this at the bottom of a toy box. The only reason I picked it up is it's from 2002 and it's by the Fimbles. It's just really random. Checked solds and solds were crazy and there were hardly any listed. This one isn't in great condition. You can see the seller tape on the back there because a the little screw is missing there. You push some buttons or twist some and then it makes music. 16 quid all in for that. I don't know who's buying it, but it made 16 quid. It's not even in the best condition. Lots of scuffing around there and that back as well. There we are. Keep an eye out for those though. Three action figures to show you now. Check this out. This is a Kenner Batman. I absolutely love this figure. Larger scale than the one that I've got chilling up in the shadows up there. Nice metallic cowl, but the best bit is though, look, it's got three buttons on the back. Punching, kicking, more punching. Awesome, he's gone for 10 pounds all in. He's pretty old actually. Kenner, early 2000s, great little model. And then I sold a couple of these and I see these all the time and I don't pick them up and I don't know why I picked them up. They're easy to post. We've got Star Lord there. He's gone for 10 quid all in. And this is a character off of Jurassic Park. Can't remember his name. Summer Owens, I think. Good condition. He sold for 16 quid all in. And they've sold within a week. Within a week. No accessories either. So yeah, I'm going to take these a bit more seriously. When I find them, I'll probably take a few more chances and pick up some larger bundles. And then sale of the weekend. World Cup is just around the corner, isn't it? So I decided to list up both of my England jerseys. I found them when I went shopping in Newport. This is from Euro 2000. It's got the number three on the back. A few little skags hit here and there. No stains, generally good condition. Size extra large. I sold that for 40 quid all in. And that seems to be at the lower end of what this shirt sells like. But I wouldn't be surprised over the next couple of weeks we see eBay flooded as people have saved up shirts to try and capitalise and get the higher value. I listed mine up, took an offer that I was happy with, profit straight in the bank. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Shame about that auction. But the more I think about it, the more I'm content that I didn't win it, if that makes sense. Didn't want to over leverage myself and I've still got a fair bit of stuff here to be listed on eBay. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'll be back with you next Wednesday where we hit up a few more charity shops and try and find some more bits to sell on eBay. Catch up with you then.